Well, let's let's turn to the book of Acts now. I'm going to take you as long as we can on a list through the specific New Testament passages that talk about the targets of Satan's attacks. Those I just read were the elements of the war that swirls within us, but Satan, who never sleeps, never stops stalking each of God's children, has been revealed in the Bible. And the Bible clearly explains the targets in our life that Satan wants to direct his constant attacks toward. And I just want you to see these in context. Acts chapter 5, and I'm going to start you in verse 3. Okay, Acts 5, 3. Point number one. Here's target number one. And this is just so amazing to, to just see jump out of the pages of the early church. Number one, Satan can fill our hearts as believers with a desire to misrepresent our devotion to God so that we are hypocritical. Okay? Verse 3. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan... Now, we are talking to a New Testament believer... I mean, I mean, a few people here and there might say, oh, this guy wasn't even a believer. But the vast majority of people throughout the centuries have taken these as good, solid citizens of the kingdom in the New Testament church, Ananias and Sapphira. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Hmm, what did he do? And keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. Ooh. He didn't put all of his possessions in the offering plate. Is that what this is all about? Is this a giving to the Lord passage? Is this to up your giving? Is this to make everybody feel guilty? No, no, that's not what this story is about at all. This record is this. The sin of Ananias and Sapphira was energized by Satan. That's the first point. That's why Peter, first thing he says is, Why has Satan filled your heart? Satan can fill the hearts of unguarded believers with wrong desires. So that's a very important point. Uh, Satan knows how to lie in the minds and hearts of church members, even genuine Christians, and get them influenced to his desires. Always remember that spiritual armor was given to believers, not unbelievers. It is believers who are in danger of being used by Satan to accomplish his evil purposes. That's, that's the first thing this whole verse is about. That a, a member of the New Testament church got filled with Satan's desires instead of God's. Now, how did that happen? Well, their sin was motivated by pride. And pride is a sin that God especially hates and judges. And while the church was praising God for the generous offering of Barnabas, that's what is going on in chapter 4. Remember, there are no chapter divisions in the Bible. It's one continuous story. And Barnabas sold his vacation house in Cyprus. Some possession he had there, he sold it to help the early church and everyone was so moved by that and the early church was so just rejoicing in such sacrifice and so they were praising God for the generous offering of Barnabas and while that was going on all around in the church Satan whispered to Ananias and Sapphira hey you could bask in this kind of glory you can make others think that you're as spiritual as Barnabas and so instead of resisting Satan's approach they yielded to him and they planned their strategy they would go sell something and make a big deal of it and come marching in. And, but since no one knew how much it was sold for, they represented that they were completely sacrificing this object they sold and they were completely giving it to the Lord. But they had worked out that they weren't. They were keeping back for themselves. So they would get all the praise, God would get a present, and they'd still have something left. It's easy for us to condemn Ananias and Sapphira for their dishonesty. But we need to examine our own lives to see if our profession is backed, by, backed up by our practice. Do we really mean everything we pray about in public? Do we sing the hymns and gospel songs sincerely or routinely? Jesus said, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. If God killed a religious deceiver today, I wonder how many church members would survive. You know what this is all about? This Ananias and Sapphira thing is all about them representing a deeper level of devotion and sacrifice to God than they really possessed. They were faking it, in other words. We must keep in mind that their sin was not robbing God of money, but in robbing Him of glory. God did not demand they sell their property. Having sold it, God did not demand that they give all the money to the church. Their lust for recognition conceived a sin in their heart. And they 
proudly affirmed a deeper spiritual devotion than what God knew was real in their life. Satan energizes us to do that. We hear someone getting praised for memorizing, and we start talking about how much we've memorized. We hear someone being praised about soul winning, so we start talking about soul winning. We hear someone getting praised about going on missions, and we start talking about our mission strips. We just have this internal quick button that Satan can push where we want to promote ourselves. Beware of allowing Satan to make you proudly affirm a deeper spiritual sacrifice or devotion than what God knows is real in your heart. What's the solution? Repent of half-hearted devotion right now. Instead of affirming a higher devotion, repent of half-hearted devotion. And, and anew and afresh, give yourself to the Lord. Just say, I want to be your bound servant, your bond servant that's completely bound to you. I want my desires and my finances and my time and my attention and my mind to be yours. And instead of affirming that you're greater than you really are, go to God and say, I'm not what I need to be, and I repent of that, and I anew and afresh give myself to you. Because Satan wants to fill our heart with desires to represent ourselves as greater than we really are.